ready. Okay, and camera is running. Effects ready. Ready. And action sack. You ready? Go. So, what's up? Welcome to another episode of The Imbecile. Now, last week you saw me electrocuted. Two days ago you saw me take a bath in pepper spray. And yesterday, wearing a bulletproof vest, I took three slugs from a 38 in the chest, and you freaks still weren't satisfied. So today, we are going to separate men from the boys. And I'm going to teach you how to play Russian roulette. Now, if you don't know what Russian roulette is, tough shit, because I'm not here to enlighten the lesser half of the gene pool. Just look it up, you ignorant fucks. Now, to play a game like this, you can't be some kind of a pink, fuzzy, slipper-wearing faggot, all right? You gotta have a set of brass balls, like, well, a set of brass balls like this. You know what I'm saying? All right. And watch very closely. I want you to see that there's no sleight of hand involved and that this is the real thing. What I have here is an empty 357 Magnum and one live round. Let me repeat, this is live ammunition. This is the real deal. Now watch very closely as I load the gun. I now have no idea where this round is. If I put this to my head, I got about a one in six chance of never getting another opportunity to suck down a bud, get a blowjob from my sister, or watch the WWF while my little brother tries to fuck the family dog in the ass in the other room. True story. Little insight into my uh, personal family history. Now watch very closely because you might not get another chance to see this. Oh, by the way, before I go any farther, I want you to know that this is a great way to get pussy. Chicks really dig on this macho shit, and I would not kid you. I would not lead you astray. I don't do this for my health. Now watch. Now, on the show... The fuck was that? Oh, shit. Pick him up. What the fuck was that? Pick him up. Oh, shit. No, don't touch Pick it. Up. Don't touch anything. Oh, shit! Okay, okay people, everybody oh, off the set shit. now. Everybody. Do you hear me? I don't want to see anybody on this set. Someone call the paramedics now. He's dead. Is he fucking dead? I don't Have know. I don't know. Call, call, call an ambulance. Call 911. How the fuck did this happen? Motherfucker, you used a live round. What the fuck are you talking about? Guys, cut it out. Come on. What, are you fucking blaming me? Are you responsible for the handling of the fire? Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up right now. Turn this camera off. Jesus Christ. See that again. So, I'll give you fifteen. Nice work. Sandy Eberhardt. Welcome back to Indie Cinema. Tonight our final guest is the very controversial and virtually unknown independent filmmaker David Michan. We'll be discussing his latest project, True Story, in which he incorporates real footage of an actual death which occurred during an accident. David, thank you for being with us tonight. Good evening. So, True Story became your opera prima. Well, this is the first one to actually get some recognition. You know, I've completed other projects, but they went unnoticed by the critics and the public. Now, tell me where the idea came from for your short film. Uh, actually, we were shooting a TV pilot called Imbecile. Zach was the host. He would just do crazy stunts. Um, 
feces diving, uh, lighting himself on fire, anything to push it to the edge. And ultimately he went over it. What was the point for the imbecile show? There was no point. It was just a stupid show to entertain people. I mean, that's what people want to see now. Simple shows, simple ideas. So then how did you turn this unfinished pilot into the short film that you have now? We were filming the, uh, the third show and there was a really terrible accident. It was completely improbable. I mean, we would double check everything. The safety of the crew was and is always the most important priority and I even personally handed him the gun. I know that this is very hard for you to talk about, David, but why did you use the actual footage of his death? Well, he always wanted to be a famous actor. He wanted to be recognized by everybody. Um, he wanted to set his place in history. And after the accident, I felt, I felt so bad for him and his family. I felt responsible. And I wanted to make this dream of his come true. So after about six months of depression, sadness, drinking, I came up with the idea to make a movie about his life, about his dream, wanting to be a famous actor. I started writing immediately. I finished the script in seven days. I tried to sell it, but nobody was interested. So that's why you decided to make a profit on the death of your friend? Well, I wouldn't call it a profit. Um, I sold the video in order to fund Zach's project. Yeah, all the money goes towards that movie. But David, why use the actual footage of the death? Why didn't you try to recreate it with special effects that would have been very doable? One of the reasons was that I wanted to show the real Zach. Not some actor playing Zach. I wanted to show who he really was. And I wanted to show something that people would remember him by. So I just, um, I started putting everything together the way it really happened from the beginning. No actors, no scripts, just the true story. But David, don't you think that people are going to be coming to this movie for the sheer morbid curiosity of seeing this gruesome death on screen? Do you think that maybe you might be cheapening Zach's death by exposing no. him to everyone? No, not at all. I think that's what he would have wanted, to be recognized. I mean, I don't, I don't care what people's motives are to go see the film just as long as they go. I did it for him, not for me. I owe him. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, so I only have one more question for you, David. Do you think that this movie is going to take America by surprise? Definitely. Why? Because people are voyeurs. People want to know about their neighbors' lives. They want to know intimate things. People want real TV, they want real blood, real sex, real suffering. And everybody wants to be an actor. They'll do anything to get in front of a camera. They'll, they'll starve on a deserted island. They'll be denigrated, abused, hurt. Anything for their 15 minutes of fame. You know, America's in transition. It's evolution. People don't want fiction, they want reality. And America is watching. Well, we're all out of time. David, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you for having me, Sandy. I'm Sandy Eberhardt. Thank you for watching Indie Cinema. We'll see you here next week. Good night. so much I thought they were going to give you an award. <laughs> so fucking stupid. So how's it feel to be dead? You know? Feels famous, Dave. Feels fucking famous! <laughs> <laughs>